Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here the Nook tablet, which was just released this week. It's a 7-inch uh, tablet with a 1024 by 600 pixel display, a 1 gigahertz uh, OMAP 4 dual-core processor, and uh, 16 gigabytes of storage, although it turns out that most of that is actually not accessible to users unless you use it to um, about 12 gigabytes you can fill up with content downloaded from Barnes & Noble. You can put about one gig of your own music, movies, other, other stuff on here. Um, but there is an SD card slot which you can use to uh, put an extra 32 gigs or 4 gigs or whatever size uh, SD card you have into it. Um, I did an unboxing a little bit earlier, so you can check out that video for more details of uh, sort of the setup and what comes in the box. But real quick, we've got a speaker here, which turns out to be reasonably loud, um, but you wouldn't really want to use it as your uh, sole device for uh, listening to lots of music or movies or using this in a loud room. Um, but there is a headphone jack, we'll get to it in a second. There's a micro USB port, power button, volume buttons, headphone jack, microphone, and the Nook button, which uh, is pretty much it for buttons. This device runs a version of Android, but it's not quite uh, like your typical Android. It's also not quite like what you would get with earlier uh, versions of the Barnes & Noble modifications. So it looks a lot like the Nook color, but it's a little bit different. So when you launch it, for instance here, we have this home screen, uh, which does not look like your typical Android home screen, but uh, does have a couple of similarities, such as you can arrange different icons in different places on the home screen or put them back into... well, that doesn't want to go back in there. Um, so we've got recent documents that we've been using here, a tray down here at the bottom with access to quick access to certain functions like books, newsstand, movies, music, and apps, and then a notification tray at the very bottom with uh, the time we're connected to wireless network, battery meter, and this little icon that lets us get back to a book quickly. Now, if there's one thing that really sets the Nook tablet apart from uh, tablets from Acer and Asus and Lenovo and others, it's the fact that it really is meant for reading more than anything else. Um, that said, it's, uh, well, actually not just reading, but media consumption in general. It runs some Android applications, but what it functions best as is a device for um, reading books and everything sort of is central to the book reading experience. You'll notice it's got a very wide viewing angle for the screen. Everything looks pretty great from any angle, which is very nice. And when you're reading a book, that is true as well. So you can see the text from different angles. In terms of the book reading experience, we uh, have a lot of different options here. You can change the fonts, you can change the overall theme, to adjust the colors. And we can tweak the screen brightness and other settings. From the home screen, uh, as we mentioned, in addition to uh, the book reader, though, we can access things like movies. And what it'll do here is it doesn't actually, Barnes & Noble doesn't currently offer their own movie store, but uh, will offer you access to several different applications. So we've got the Netflix application, the Hulu Plus application come preloaded, and there are other apps that you can download. Um, some are paid and some are free. Uh, Netflix and Hulu both uh, come with a tablet, but they do require a subscription to use, or you can use free trials of either one. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick look at the Netflix application, because I'm already logged in there. So this is the new Netflix application which was just released this week, designed for tablets, and it gives you a look at uh, recently watched items, including uh, your progress meter, um, and then you can scroll through for additional items or search. And the video quality is pretty good, although sometimes I've noticed it loads up kind of uh, fuzzy and then requires you to uh, go back in and adjust it, but overall I've been pretty impressed with how things look, and again, the viewing angles are excellent here. We can go back to the home screen by pressing the Nook button twice, and uh, let's take a quick look at the newsstand. I've got a popular science magazine here that I downloaded. Um, this is something that I'm a little bit iffier on. Uh, the magazine reading experience is kind of strange because the magazines, they sort of replicate the experience of reading a printed magazine, and it's kind of hard to tell here on the on the video, but 
that's not the magazine size screen. You know, if you're used to magazines being more like an 11 or 12 inch page, uh, we've got a 7 inch screen here and you really have to uh, double click or zoom if you want to be able to read the text clearly. And then you're sort of scrolling around in a strange way here. Um, you can also do a view like this, which really gives you a magazine-like experience, but also really shrinks the text to a point where it's almost unreadable. Um, there is something called article view, which gives you easy to read um, versions without all the pictures, so you can just see the text here. And that's, that's a nice feature, it definitely makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to navigate, but it's not really what I would expect from a magazine reading experience. So uh, it's nice that there are magazines and newspapers available here, but overall the experience of reading books I find to be much more pleasant. Um, here, when you click the Nook button from the home screen, or really from any application screen, you can go home, you can go to your library, which will show you books, magazines, applications, and so forth. We can go to the shop, uh, where we can download additional applications. I'll come back to that in a second. There's a search bar uh, for searching content on your device. Apps, which will take you straight to your list of apps. Web, which takes you to the web browser. And settings, and there's a nice number of settings in here. We can get to the device info where you can see how much battery power you've got left, how much storage space is left, and so forth. Um, but there are a number of different other things that you can uh, tweak in here, including behavior of the screen, keyboard, wireless, and so forth. Uh, digging back into a couple of those features, the, uh, the web browser, uh, reasonably fast, supports pinch to zoom, zoom in and zoom out, also supports Adobe Flash. Um, it doesn't have browser tabs per se, but you can have multiple windows open and flip between those windows. One of the first things I discovered is that if you do go to the Hulu website, which uh, doesn't want to fully load right now, um, it'll load the Flash content, but then it'll tell you that uh, your device is not authorized to watch Hulu. So overall, the web browsing experience is about what you'd expect on a portable tablet-style device. Um, it would be nice if you could install alternate web browsers, but right now I don't think there are any available in the uh, Barnes & Noble app marketplace. Um, I did install a couple of different applications, though, including the Goodreads application, uh, there is a music player, the Pandora application works really quite well, uh, and looks great here. You can see it's been modified a little bit from the default Android application and it will play music in the background as you are uh, reading books, which is a nice addition. Um, what else did I want to show you? The shop. So uh, the thing about the shop is it's organized uh, into different areas, so you can look for um, books, magazines, newspapers, music and video apps, applications, and kids. Um, the books are really well done. The uh, newspapers and magazines, you might not find everything you're looking for, but you can sub subscribe, and there's two-week trial subscriptions to most of them, which is great. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with the reading experience on those so far. And then in terms of apps, there are some really great apps in here, including Evernote, uh, Angry Birds, Scrabble, some word games, um, Pandora, Groove Shark, and so forth. But there aren't nearly as many free apps, at least in terms of games, as I've noticed in the Android market or the Amazon App Store. So, uh, for instance, if you want to play Scrabble, you're going to have to spend $3 on Scrabble. There's no free version. There's no free version of Angry Birds. Um, so it's a little bit harder to find the apps you're looking for because this is a curated list of applications um, from Barnes & Noble and developers that have worked with Barnes & Noble and it's a little bit harder to find free applications. Um, ultimately, I suspect that somebody's going to figure out a way to root this device and uh, sideload applications, which is what happened with the original Nook Color. But the initial indications are that it might be a little bit harder to do that on this device than with the Nook Color. Um, and what that means is that in terms of running apps, you're pretty much, at least for, very, for right now, stuck with the applications that are available from Barnes & Noble. That's not horrible if you buy this device specifically looking for something that's going to be able to 
use Netflix, read books, uh, watch mag uh, view magazines and newspapers and, and that sort of uh, content. And it, they do have some really nice apps. I use Pandora quite a bit, I use Netflix quite a bit, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's no Facebook app, but you can download Seismic for free and access Facebook and Twitter. So overall, the, the, the experience is, is pretty nice, but it's not a general all-purpose Android tablet. And if that's what you're looking for, you might want to look elsewhere. This is Brad Linder for Lilliputing.